Hello everybody, welcome back. This is the next lesson in the number addition and subtraction series of lessons. I'm Mrs Furlong, you might remember me from last week. I'm going to be taking over from Mrs Mole for the next two days. So we're on to lesson three of deepening understanding of equivalence and the equal sign in addition and subtraction. Yesterday, Mrs Mole left you with these questions to practice. And we're going to start today's lesson by reviewing those questions. So in question one, you were asked to fill in the missing numbers. I noticed a connection between 11,997 and 12,000. Did you spot it? That's right, 11,997, if it's increased by three, will get us to 12,000. So if one add end has been increased by three, the other add end has to be decreased by three. That's right. So our 64,036 becomes 64,033. I think this is much easier to calculate than the original calculation. So I'm saying that 64,033 plus 12,000 is easier to calculate. What do you think? That's right. We only need to pay attention to the thousands and tens of thousands columns to be able to do this using place value. We really just need to look at the 64 in the 64,033 and the 12 in the 12,000. And I know that 64,000 and 12,000 gives me 78,000, but I mustn't forget those 33. They're very important. So the next set of questions that Mrs Mole left you was part two which was to look at the calculations and decide which ones you would use redistribution for and explain why. Well, I was thinking about the purpose of redistribution in the previous lesson, and that was to make calculations easier, wasn't it? So let's take a look at A. 12,036 add 32,873. I think to make these easier, ideally I'd want to get them to either a multiple of 100 or a multiple of 1,000. So if I look at 12,036, I could decrease that by 36 to get me to 12,000. And I could increase 32,873 by 36. But this is meant to be a mental calculation method. And I'm thinking by the time I've done all of that hard work, it might have been easier just to do a column calculation in the first place. I Equally, I could look at the 32,873 and think, Hmm, I could make it into 32,900, but again, I would need to increase it by 27 and decrease the other number by 27. And by the time I've done all of that redistributing, I still think I'd have been quicker to do a column calculation. And this is meant to make our mental calculation easier. And I think those numbers are just a little bit too much redistribution. What do you think? So let's take a look at part B. 504,992 add 11,008. Hmm. You take a close look at this. I wonder whether you noticed what I noticed. I noticed that 504,992 is actually really close to 505,000. In fact, I only have to increase it by 8 and decrease the 11,008 by 8. And then you can see I've got myself a really easy calculation. 505,000 add 11,000 is 516,000. That one's a really good one to redistribute. I wonder if you thought the same. Let's take a look at part C now. 25,317 add 22,997. The second add end really jumped out at me. 22,997, that's almost 23,000, isn't it? In fact, it's only three away. So if I increase that second add end by three, I must decrease the first add end by three to make sure that my sum remains the same. I wonder if you did what I did. So look, here we are, we get 25,314. That's three less than 25,317. And we get 23,000, which is three more than 22,997. Now I've got an easy calculation and I can find out that it's 
48,314. The final question, 99,164 add 8,419. I took a really careful look at these numbers, but I think both of them are quite far away from either a helpful multiple of 100 or a multiple of 1,000. So I decided not to use redistribution. I don't know whether you did the same. I wonder how you explained it. So for the last set of questions, Mrs. Mole asked you to have a look at the equations and decide if they were correct, and then explain how you know. So let's have a look at A. We've got 7,644 add 21,996 is equal to 7,648 add 22,000. So I had a look at the first addend in A, the 7,644, and noticed that it had increased by 4 to get 7,648. I then had a look at the second addend. So the 21,996 had increased by 4 to get 22,000. Hmm. Our generalised statement was if one addend is increased by an amount and the other addend is decreased by the same amount, the sum remains the same. Did you spot what had happened here? Yes, you're right. Both addends have increased by four. And if you think back to the first lesson Mrs. Mole did on this, with things like the water, where one jug increased by a little whilst the other decreased, or with her sweets, one bowl of sweets got less and the other bowl of sweets got more to get that sum to remain the same. In this case, if we've increased both of those addends by four, we're going to have increased our sum, aren't we? Let's take a look at question B now. 123,017 add 4,999 gives us a total of 128,017. Hmm. Well, I've noticed that the 17 in the tens and the ones is the same in the first add end and in the sum. Hmm. And I'm not adding on a multiple of 10 or 100. So I'm wondering, can that remain the same? Let's have a look at my thinking. So my explanation was that 123,017 add 5,000 would give me 128,017. So therefore, 123,017 add 4,999, which is one smaller, must give me a sum that is one smaller. So 128,016. So neither of those calculations were correct, were they? I wonder how you got on. I hope you did well. OK, so now we're ready to start today's session. You might need to get yourself some paper and a pencil, and if you haven't already done that, pause the video now and go and find some. OK, so today's session, we are going to be again looking at those addends and using our generalised statement of increasing one addend and decreasing the other addend by the same amount to make sure that our sum remains the same. But in our context today, we're going to be thinking about decimal numbers. So I just wanted to do a quick reminder about those before we get started. So in my presentation today, in this lesson, you're going to see that this blue square is representing one. It's not representing 100 like you might have met before in other lessons and maybe at school. It's representing one. So one large blue square represents one. OK, so just remember that. All right. Then we need to think about this rod. OK, this rod in this session 10 of those rods are going to make one aren't they if you imagine 10 of those green rods side by side they would be the same size as the one so this rod is representing 0.1 or one tenth and finally this little yellow cube is going to represent one hundredth or 0 0.01 
you need to remember that for today. There's going to be a little bit more about this on the next slide, just to make sure you fully understand. Okay, so just to make sure that everybody understands and everybody's clear, we're just going to spend a little bit longer looking at these rods. Can you remember what this green rod is worth in today's session? That's right, it's one tenth or 0 0.1. We're going to count in tenths now. I'd love it if you joined in with me. One tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, five tenths, six tenths, seven tenths, eight tenths, nine tenths, ten tenths. What do you know about ten tenths? That's right, you did a lot on this in the previous sessions when you were doing fractions. Ten tenths is equivalent to one. Okay, so ten tenths is the same as one. So we can also say that as 10 multiplied by 1 tenth or 10 multiplied by 0 0.1 is the same as 1 as well. Can you remember what this small cube's worth in today's session? That's right, it's worth 1 hundredth. Can you count with me? 1 hundredth, 2 hundredths, 3 hundredths, 4 hundredths, 5 hundredths, 6 hundredths, 7 hundredths, 8 hundredths, 9 hundredths, Ten hundredths. What are ten hundredths the same as? Exactly the same as my green rod, my one tenth. So ten hundredths equals one tenth, or ten lots of zero point zero one is also equal to either zero point one, which we all know is the same as one tenth. Just keep those in your head today because it will really help you with some of your work. So this is going to be our first calculation in today's session. Four point five add 2.9. Have a look at the representations that I've done. Can you see where the 4 is on the representation? That's right. So these four ones represent our 4 in our calculation here. Um, can you find where the 0.5 is? Yep, that's right. You found them here. Our 5 tenths are here, aren't they? Brilliant. And what, what do these over here represent? That's right, there are two ones. And here, there are nine tenths in this part. Brilliant. OK, so we know that we can work out 4.5 at 2.9. And some of you might have been doing that whilst I was just explaining the representation. In fact, I bet some of you did. So we could work it out with a column. We could work it out using some kind of a mental method. But what if we consider our generalised statement? If one add end is increased by an amount and the other add end is decreased by the same amount, the sum remains the same. Hmm. Have a look at the numbers. If we were using that redistribution property, which number would you increase and which number would you decrease and why? You might want to pause the video for a moment here and have a think. Did you make a decision? I wonder if your decision was the same as mine. We'll find out in a moment. I wonder, did any of you try to increase the 4.5, the first add end? If you did, did you decide that making the 4.5 into 5 would make the calculation easier? Let's take a look. So, oh, did you see what happened there? Did you see that from the 2.9, 5 tenths moved over to the 4.5, so that we have increased our 4.5. What have we increased it by? That's right, those 5 tenths moved over, so we've increased it by 0 0.5. We've increased 4.5 by 0 0.5, and we've decreased 2.9 by 0 0.5. It's a bit like on that first session where Mrs. Mole moved those sweets in that bowl, isn't it? One bowl decreased and the other increased. It was important that we focused on that 4.5 though and how much we needed to increase it by. We increased it by five tenths to make it into five ones. Can you see here that we now have 10 tenths in those green strips and we looked at those earlier didn't we and we said 10 tenths is the same as one whole or one so we now have five ones on the left hand side as our left hand add end and we now have 2.4 on that right hand side 
And I think that 5 add 2.4 is quite an easy calculation. I wonder if you agree. 5 add 2.4, 7.4. And because we've done our increasing of one add end and decreasing the other by the same amount, our sum remains the same. So that can help me now to answer 4.5 add 2.9, which is also 7.4. I could also represent it like the calculation at the bottom of the screen. And you can see that they're side by side. So 4.5 add 2.9 is equal to 5 add 2.4, which is equal to 7.4. Everything's balanced. Our sums have remained the same. So our equal sign is being used correctly. Perhaps you didn't do that. Perhaps you looked at these two numbers and you decided to focus on the 2.9. I wonder why. Oh, because 2.9 is almost 3, isn't it? How far away from 3 is 2.9? That's right, it's just one tenth away. So if I was to increase 2.9 by one tenth, then I would make 3. And the only place I can get that one tenth from is from my 4.5. So just have a little look at the animation. There we go. One tenth went across from the 4.5 and it landed on the 2.9, it redistributed. So can you see now that we decreased 4.5 by one tenth and we increased 2.9 by one tenth? And what did we get? Did you spot it? So at this side here, we now have 10 tenths, don't we, on, in these green rods. And remember, 10 tenths is equivalent to one whole. So at this side, we don't have 2.9 anymore. We have 3. And at the other side, we don't have 4.4 anymore. That add end, sorry, we don't have 4.5 anymore. That add end is now 4.4. Aha, 4.4 add 3. I think that's quite easy. Do you? Yeah, that's right. It's still 7.4. And that means that our sums remain the same. And so 4.5 add 3.9 is also 7.4. And you can see again at the calculation at the bottom of the screen or the equation, 4.5 add 2.9 is equal to 4.4 add 3. And both of those equal 7.4. So we've balanced our equations. We've got that same sum all the way through. OK, so we've got a different calculation this time. Have you spotted that we've now got hundredths in there? Remember those small yellow cubes are representing our hundredths, aren't they? Hmm. I can see a three in both of my add-ends. I can see the three in the 3.08, and I can also see the three digit in the 4.39. Can you spot where they're represented in my base 10 equipment or in my deans? Ah, that's right. So. The three ones is represented here by our three ones that we're using as our representation for today. And my three tenths are represented over here, aren't they, by my three green rods. That's right. One other thing I'm a little confused by, and some people find a bit tricky, is where is my zero here represented? What's that zero meaning? Yes, it's in the tenths column. It means we haven't got any tenths. There are zero tenths. And as you can see over here in this representation, there are none of my green rods. So we have zero tenths. OK, so the tenths are not represented as an absence. I've left a little space just to show that. Right. Let's think about our calculation then. So again, if we are going to be using that equivalence or same sum rule, if one add end is increased by an amount, and the other add end is decreased by the same amount, the sum remains the same. So take a look at these two numbers now, the 3.08 and the 4.39. What do you think you would do this time to redistribute those numbers to make the calculation easier? Pause the video here and have a think. I wonder whether in this calculation you noticed what I noticed. I spotted that 3.08 is actually really close to 3. It's only 8 hundredths away, which is a tiny amount. Hmm. So I wondered whether I could decrease 3.08 by those 8 hundredths and increase, therefore, the 4.39 by 8 hundredths. Have a look. So 
my hundredths have moved over. My eight hundredths have moved over to join 4.39. So 3.08 has decreased by eight hundredths and 4.39 has increased by eight hundredths. So now we get a new equivalent calculation. But it's not that easy because if you spot at this side, I've got eight hundredths here and I've got nine hundredths here. I have to think quite carefully about recombining those, don't I? And if you imagine me stealing one of those hundredths or redistributing one of those hundredths and popping it on top of there, can you see that we get a new tenth? So therefore, we would have four tenths. And then we would have seven hundredths here. I wonder if you can imagine that. So, our new calculation or our equivalent calculation would be three add 4.47. But I'm just wondering to myself, has that really helped me, that redistribution? Because really, couldn't I just have done three ones, add four ones, and then done the eight hundredths and the thirty nine hundredths and partition the calculation. I wonder whether this particular redistribution was very helpful. I'm not so sure. Sometimes redistributing the numbers doesn't help or sometimes it doesn't help because you might not have redistributed them in the best way. Let's have a look at the next example. So we're back with those set, that same calculation, the 3.08 add the 4.39. Maybe you chose to redistribute the numbers in a different way. Maybe you spotted that the 4.39 is very close to 4.4 and that that might help us. So if I increase the 4.39 by one hundredth, if you watch it happen, it should happen now. There we go. Increase it by one hundredth. You can see now that we have not got 4.39 anymore. We've got four and one, two, three, four tenths, because remember, 10 hundredths is the same as one tenth, isn't it? So we've increased 4.39 by one hundredth, so we had to decrease the other add end, the 3.08 by one hundredth, which happened a moment ago in my animation. And we've now got 3.07 add 4.4. We could use place value to help us to work this out now, and we would get 7.47. So perhaps that redistribution was a little better than the other, but you may still be sat there thinking that you didn't really need to do it, that actually I could just have added 8 hundredths onto the 39 hundredths, in which case, if that is quicker, there's no point in redistributing the numbers at all, is there? So let's look at this example now. Sadie decided to make this equivalent calculation to help her to solve this more easily. So let's have a look at that equivalent calculation first. Pause the video here and have a careful look at what did Sadie do to make the calculations equivalent. Did you spot it? She decreased the first add end, hasn't she? And she's increased the second add end. I wonder which one she focused on first. I think she focused on 3.982 because 3.98 is very close to 4. And we've already discovered that calculating with integers or whole numbers is much easier than calculating with decimals. So 3.98 has increased by what to get to 4? We've got 98 hundredths. How many hundredths do we need to make that next one, that whole one? That's right, we need 100 hundredths to make a whole one, so we need two more hundredths. So it's increased by two hundredths, and the first add end has decreased by two hundredths. Hmm. How do we know that 5.3 decreasing by two hundredths gives us 5.28? What do we know about 0.3? We do know it's three tenths, brilliant. How many hundredths make a tenth? 
That's right, it was 10 hundredths. Do you remember at the start of the video where we saw those 10 little yellow cubes make the same size as that one green rod, that tenth rod? Brilliant. So if you imagine that we had three tenth rods, how many of those little yellow cubes would we need? That's right, 30, 30 hundredths. So 5.3 is also the same as 5 and 30 hundredths. And if we decrease those 30 hundredths by 2, we'd get 28 hundredths. So it's 5.28. And 5.28 add 4 is 9.28. So we've now got that equivalent calculation. I think Sadie's made it quite easy. So Sanjay decided to complete the calculation in this way. decisions do you think Sanjay made to create his equivalent calculation or his same sum? Have a careful look. You might want to pause the video just whilst you do that. Did you spot it? That's right, there was a bit of a clue wasn't there in the 5.3 and the 5. The 5.3 must have decreased by 3 tenths to get it to 5. So to make sure it's that equivalent same sum we must increase the other add end by 0.3. Let's take a little bit of a careful look at 3.98 and increasing it by 0.3. What do we know about 0.3? That's right, it's 3 tenths. And what do we know about 3 tenths? How many hundredths are there in 3 tenths? Yes, we did this on the previous slide. There's 30 hundredths, aren't there? So we're increasing this by 30 hundredths. So I was thinking, how about if we take our 3.98, increase it by 2 hundredths to get to 4 ones, and then I need to increase it by a further 28 hundredths, which will get me to 4.28. And he's created another equivalent calculation, and you can see there we have that same sum, the 9.28. So 5 add 4.28 is 9.28. I think that's a little easier than the original calculation. Do you? Let's just compare Sadie and Sanjay's methods now side by side. Which one do you prefer and why? If you could pause the video here and have a careful look at them side by side and we'll speak about it again in a moment. I wonder which one you chose. Well, both of them are absolutely fine, aren't they? Because both of them give us that same sum and that equivalent calculation. I think as long as you have followed the rule, if one add end is increased by an amount and the other add end is decreased by the same amount and the sum remains the same, then you could use either because I think both Sanjay and Sadie have created easier calculations. I think Really, this decision on which one's easier probably comes down to your own number sense and which one you think would work for you. In the last few calculations, we discovered that you can alter either add end, but now I want you to make some careful decisions about which add end to increase or decrease to make these two calculations easier to solve. So have a look at the two calculations carefully and pause the video to consider the equivalent calculations you could use to make these as easy as possible to solve. Have you done that? Let's have a look at what I thought. You might have a different decision to me. So I had a look at the 7.8 add 1.68 and I thought 7.8 is close to 8 so I'm going to increase it by 2 tenths to make it into that whole number so 7.8 becomes 8, so I'm going to decrease the other add end by 0 0.2 or 2 tenths to make it 1.48. And now I've got quite an easy calculation to solve. 8 add 1.48 is, that's right, 9.48. And so therefore, 7.8 add 1.68 is also 9.48. What about an example 2? Did you spot that 3.96? It's close to 4, isn't it? How far away is it from 4? Yes, it's only 400. So I decided that I would increase 3.96 by 400. Did you do the same? And decrease the 7.31 by 400. So our equivalent calculation is 7.27 add 4. And now we've got a much easier calculation because I can do 7 add 4 in the ones. And then I just need to remember that 0.27 at the end, don't I? So we'd get a total or a sum of 11.27 plus 
which means that both 7.27 add 4 is 11.27 and so is 7.31 add 3.96. Personally, I think our redistributed numbers are definitely easier to solve. What do you think? OK, so now it's your turn to do some work. Um, I've left you with some practice for today. In part A, I just want you to fill in the missing numbers. And you'll notice that there's a connection between the ones in the boxes. So make sure you pay attention to the connection between this calculation and the equation underneath. OK, thinking about that redistribution. And that's the same in each of those boxes. Um, I put on that generalised statement for you just to remind you. And then part B says ready for a challenge. Salvo says that the best way to solve these calculations is to use the same sum or an equivalent calculation, it means the same thing, um, to make them easier. Mia disagrees and says that it is easier and quicker to use a written method. Who is right? I wonder whether you could compete with someone in your household and help you find out whose is quicker. Remember, our equivalent calculations, you don't have to write down all the steps we've written down today. They're just there to help you understand. Eventually, it'd be great if you can imagine that one ad end increasing and the other ad end decreasing. And then it's a bit like turning your sum into a magical new calculation that you can do really quickly. And maybe you could keep it secret from your parents or whoever you compete against about what you did and show them what an absolute wish you are. I hope you've enjoyed today's session. I'm back again tomorrow, so I'll see you then.